A couple people on Reddit have requested some information on my Mongoose Dolomite e-bike build. And so I was going to do a quick run through on what it took to build and what sort of modifications I needed to do to get it running. So one thing I'll note, uh, I'm definitely not a bike expert, but I do have some experience doing the basic stuff like putting on and taking off wheels, fixing flat tires, adjusting the chain or the derailleur, stuff like that. So that's sort of my level of comfort. So right off before even getting into the e-bike part of it, the build of the actual bike, it took me a little bit. I bought it from Walmart. I don't have a truck, and so I explicitly told them not to assemble it, which means that I did the assembly myself. I was actually happy to do this because it needed some tuning. I needed to adjust the hubs. The front hub was too tight, which means that it didn't spin very easily when spinning um, freely off the bike. I needed to adjust the brakes a lot, and I actually had to adjust the rear derailleur so that it wasn't clicking or shifting badly. One other thing is that I did ride the bike a few times before converting it just to make sure that everything was smooth. Any bad sounds or grinding or especially trouble shifting will absolutely destroy the cheap drivetrain when you have a 750 watt BBSO2 or even more uh, if you use the Luna hot rod kit. So the next part, taking off the stock pedal cranks was a nightmare. I mentioned this on Reddit they were on so tight. I bought a crank puller tool. I think I just got it off eBay or Amazon, but it still took me a while. Uh, the bottom bracket was super easy to take out. The bolts that you know came assembled from the factory were not even tight. They were probably a little bit more than hand tight. I used a park tool, HCW5. There's a picture right here. And it came in handy later to tighten the uh, BBSO2 crush ring down, and so it's worth having, actually. I would still suggest using one, even though you might not end up needing it. The biggest part here is that the bottom bracket of the Dolomite needed to be ground down so that the BBSO2 could fit through. The BBSO2 needs about 80 millimeters, probably 75 if you're really pushing it, and the bottom bracket started out around 110, maybe a little bit more than 110. So I had to grind it probably 15 to 20 millimeters on each side. And I actually ground mine all the way down to the chain stay. Once you do this, the BBSO2 will slide in just fine, but it actually leads to another minor problem, which is that the stock bracket, which is used to reinforce the BBSO2 from flexing, won't fit. If you do slide it on, you won't be able to get the nut, the giant nut on there to tighten it down. And so the solution to this was to use uh, extra large pipe clamps. I bought one from our local hardware store that was about four and a half inches in diameter. And I bought another one that was two inches. I painted them together and then I affixed them like you can see right here. So one loops into the other one. I tightened the one down on the BBSO2, swung it up and then tightened it down onto the frame. And this is actually a really sturdy solution. It, I, think it, I think it's actually better than the stock BBS O2 mounting setup. One other thing is that the chain ring needs to mount outward and not flush. So the BBS O1 directions say that the chain ring should be flush. And then um, the problem with that is that if you mount it flush, you'll note really quickly that the chain ring will hit the chain stay. So I bought my kit from LunaCycle and it came with a 48 tooth chain ring. I, I don't know, even the smaller chain rings I think would hit. Um, that being said, mounting it outward, like shown in the picture, I think leads to a better chain line than the stock suggested setup. So it technically isn't right, but I think it works better. The other thing with the chain is that the mongoose chain is too short. It yanks on the derailleur until it's almost completely parallel with the chain, which is uh, absolutely not how it should work. You should buy a longer chain, but if you don't want to, you can just stay away from first gear. So if you start in second gear and only go down to second gear, it works fine. Okay, so the biggest headache for me in this whole build was finding a left crank arm 
that cleared the chain stay. I could not find one that had enough of an offset. I know Carl on electricbikeblog.com found one apparently pretty easily, but I looked and looked and looked and could not find anything. What I did was I butchered a different crank, a different left crank arm, and I used the bottom part that I cut off as a spacer. You can see in this picture here. I torqued the two together, put a toothed lock washer in between them, and then added some epoxy and then cranked them down using the uh, normal crank bolt. And it seems to work pretty well. It took me a while to find this solution. The Baffang wide crank arm that they sell, they actually sell one. Uh, LunaCycle is supposed to sell one. It would be perfect, but I couldn't find one in stock and I was sick of digging around on the internet. So I might end up having a welding shop, just TIG weld the two pieces together if the epoxy doesn't hold, but so far it's so good. So do note if you do use uh, a dolomite, you will have to find some sort of solution to this problem and it will likely frustrate you. But if you can learn from how I did it, that would, I mean, that would be that would be great. I wish someone had done it before me. Aside from that, I added my own light setup so that it would be street legal. Where I live, it's required that you have a front and rear light when riding at night. So that's completely optional, but I had some time while my bike was coming, so I did that. Overall, it probably took me eight or so hours in total to build. The build probably took me two hours of just grinding. I really wanted to do a good job grinding and grind carefully since taking too much off the frame or grinding into a weld or crookedly would uh, it would pretty much have ruined the frame and so I did that really slowly I probably spent another three to four hours assembling the motor cranking that down and doing all of the battery mounting and mounting all the stuff on the handlebars so that was about eight hours of work but then there was another eight or so hours I spent finding a workable pedal solution. It shouldn't have been that difficult. I was really blowing it off as being simple to find a super offset crank arm, but I just could not find one anywhere. So your mileage may vary. You might have a better, better luck than I did. And all in all, I would say that if you're comfortable working slowly, you have to have patience if you're going to do this conversion. And if you're comfortable using basic bike tools, you don't have to be a pro. And if you're comfortable using power tools, so an angle grinder was pretty much 100% necessary in this build, you can you can definitely accomplish this. It'll take you some time. You'll probably have more than a few unscheduled trips to the hardware store to find bolts or hose clamps or whatever you need. But if you're okay with that and you're not going to get impatient or frustrated and cut corners, I, I think it's absolutely worth it. I've had a lot of fun with this build. And I'm, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I suffered through. So thanks to Electric Bike Blog for inspiring this. I, he was, um, the poster was really the first guy who I'd seen take the risk on the Dolomite. And everyone will tell you the bottom bracket's too wide, but with a little bit of perseverance, you can, uh, you can solve that. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this was helpful.